Welcome to the Lore Sworn War College for Hearts of Iron 4. You're watching our series on division design, and this is the final entry in the series, lesson number 206, Specialized Divisions. Now the most common and useful form of specialized divisions you're going to be using are special forces, which include paratroopers, mountaineers, and marines. In order to demonstrate how to build these divisions and how their stats differ from normal infantry, I've created a 20 wide infantry unit with no support units and we're just going to go ahead and replace them with special forces and see how the stats change. A 20 wide marine unit loses 50 HP but gains organization, recovery rate, reduced supply use, and gets higher soft attack and breakthrough, although they also take a reduction to defense as we've shown off in previous videos. They also gain an attacking bonus when attacking in marshes, across rivers, or in amphibious landings, which is where it makes the biggest difference. I tend to stick to 20 wide with my special forces, just like I do with regular infantry, for a lot of the same reasons. Although there are arguments for situational 10 wide special forces divisions, particularly paratroopers if you're just trying to grab up a lot of territory that's lightly defended. Mountaineers, in comparison to normal infantry, again, take a penalty to HP, but gain organization and recovery rate. They use the same amount of supply, unlike Marines. They have a higher soft attack, lower defense, and higher breakthrough. So if you're seeing a theme, other than the situational terrain bonuses that they gain, Special Forces are most notable in that they're better on the attack in general, and not as good on the defense. So you probably don't want to use them to hold a line. You want your Special Forces divisions to be focused on pushing forward, especially if it's in the terrain where they are particularly useful. Mountain infantry get plus 10% movement, 20% attack, and 5% defense in hills, and plus 20% movement, plus 35% attack, and plus 10% defense in mountains. It's notable that this pretty much makes up for the defense that they lose from being a mountaineer division instead of a regular infantry division. So if you need to defend mountains, you're actually better off doing a mountaineer division than a regular infantry division, even though their base defense is lower. Now, a paratrooper division is where we see the sharpest difference in combat stats as compared to normal infantry. They lose some HP, though it should be noted not as much as mountaineers and marines do. They gain organization and recovery rate. They use less supply, actually the same amount as marines. They gain soft attack, but they lose in both defense and breakthrough. They also don't have any specialized terrain modifiers. So the true advantage of a paratrooper division, as one might guess, is in the ability to deploy to provinces that would otherwise be inaccessible by using air transport in regions where you have air superiority. When you add new units to a paratrooper division, be sure to check for this icon. As long as this is there, it means everything you've added to this unit can be paradropped by air. All support companies are eligible to be paradropped, but so far in the game, the only mainline battalions that can be paradropped are paratroopers themselves. Now here's that 20 wide marine unit we showed off earlier. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at what kind of support companies work well for special forces. I'm going to show a template that will work across the board, whether you're using mountaineers, marines, or paratroopers. But each type of special forces could be tweaked with different support companies to get a little bit more out of their particular strengths. Now as always, I'm going to start with engineers, which will further compound on our ability to fight in the areas where marines are already good, and recon as usual. The next I would go for is a logistics company, especially for paratroopers, but it's also useful on marines. Remember, your special forces are usually going to be fighting in out of supply areas, possibly cut off from reinforcements on spearhead assaults, whether that be on an island or behind enemy lines where you can't get supplies to them. So anything that reduces your supply usage is going to be a huge win for these guys. I would also almost always attach a field hospital, just because these are going to be elite units. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and select this option now that will tell the game to give them highest priority for new equipment, which I recommend doing on all of your special forces. And while we're not as worried about trickleback, since they don't use that much more manpower than a regular infantry division, in some cases it's actually less, the EXP loss is going to be a huge bonus, because the better your special forces get in terms of experience, the more effective they'll be at the specialized jobs that you send them to do. The last slot is fairly situational. If you know who you're going to be fighting, 
support artillery or support anti-tank could both be good options. And especially in terms of paratroopers, just being able to put artillery units behind enemy lines is going to be a big deal. Another somewhat unorthodox option I've been experimenting with though, and might actually work fairly well, is to add military police just for the flat increase to combat stats. I've said in the past that their only real use is their suppression bonus, but the extra defense, breakthrough, and soft attack are actually not inconsiderable, especially on a unit like Special Forces that needs to do their job as well as possible at all times. Signal companies also aren't a bad option, especially for paratroopers who are going to be trying to reinforce battles taking place on the front line from behind as a flanking unit. In this particular case, I'm just going to generalize and go with support artillery for the bonus to soft attack so these guys can land on the beaches and rout the enemy as quickly as possible. Now let's go ahead and build one of my favorite division types, tank destroyers. There is something to be said for the speed of medium and light tanks, but generally when I'm making a division specifically to kill other tanks, as long as I can afford it resource-wise, I like to go heavy. After all, the objective here is to kill as many enemy tanks as possible without getting my own tanks killed. For infantry support here, we of course have the choice of motorized, mechanized, or even cavalry, considering these medium tanks in their current state in 1941 only have a base speed of 6. Assuming I can afford it, I would prefer to stick with mechanized just because they're going to keep my combat stats high and they won't cause my hardness to drop too much, which again is going to be pretty key for a unit that is designed to kill other tanks. This is my ideal setup for a 20 wide tank destroyer unit. We have a hardness of 78, which is pretty crazy unless we're going up against other tank destroyers. These guys aren't going down anytime soon and a heart attack of 282, which is pretty significant. Six speed means that faster units, such as a motorized slash medium tank division, might be able to outrun us, but with these guys on the battlefield, they've got plenty of places to run, but nowhere to hide. My support setup for this division would be pretty similar to how I set up a regular armored division. I'm gonna go with engineering and recon right off the bat. We're definitely going to want a maintenance company. I don't really see any reason not to throw in support anti-tank just to get that extra bit of heart attack since that's what this division is for in the first place. And for the last slot, I'd probably go with the signal company. That extra initiative will allow us to tie down enemy armored units with our own faster units and then have time for these guys to get to the battle and reinforce to blow up the enemy tanks before they can rout our own guys. Now, we've barely talked about anti-air in these videos because I tend to think that it's better to spend your production on fighters than it is to spend them on ground-based anti-air, since ground-based anti-air can only deny your opponent air superiority. It can't help you win air superiority for yourself. But before we go, let's take a quick look at a somewhat versatile ground unit that I've had some success with in the past. We're going to start with a core of just motorized infantry. There's really no reason to use mechanized for this because the idea is that this is going to be a fast moving 10 wide battalion that is not actually going to be tied up in frontline combat, or at least it shouldn't be unless it's an emergency. To this we're going to go ahead and add light self-propelled anti-air, up to 10 combat width. And we might as well tack on some support anti-air as well. A maintenance company to make sure all the vehicles stay in good shape. Maybe some engineers to make sure that we can get across harsh terrain a little bit faster. Military police to buff our stats a little bit and also provide some secondary benefits that I'll talk about in a second. And finally some recon, again just mostly for the movement bonuses. Now what we've done here is created a 10 wide, highly mobile anti-aircraft unit. They have a max speed of 12 and an air attack of 153. The idea is that you'll want to garrison these guys some way behind your front line, but also in an area where the enemy is deploying a lot of air forces. They shouldn't really be involved, as I said, in front line combat, but they are going to have a pronounced effect on your ability to gain air superiority and the number of aircraft casualties your enemy is taking. Having those military police on there also increases their suppression to 3.9, which is pretty good, meaning they'll be helping you hold the area right behind your front line from partisans 
assuming it's hostile territory, which is a nice added benefit. They don't cost much equipment, but they do cost a lot of different kinds of equipment. So again, this is a highly specialized division that would probably only be advisable if you're playing a large nation with a lot of factories to spare. And in a pinch, as a frontline unit to reinforce a sticky spot, they're not that bad. Again, aside from the fact that they're going to be zipping around the battlefield pretty quick, they have a hardness of 27, which is not inconsiderable, and at least okay soft and hard attack. The motorized divisions prevent them from having terrible HP and organization, although even as it is, they're not going to be staying in the fight for very long. There are dozens more types of specialized divisions you can build that will be situationally or even broadly useful in Hearts of Iron 4. Far more than we could ever go through in one video, but we might do another video or even a whole series on specialized divisions for specific scenarios in the future. For now, thanks for watching our series on division design. If you missed any of the previous videos in the series, be sure to go back and check them out, and leave your thoughts in the comments on what types of divisions you like to use, as well as questions you might have for how to build divisions for a specific job or specific situation. This course might be over, but there's more War College to come, so be sure to subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on future courses. Until next time.